My name is Alice. I have a story to tell you. It's about a curious place called Wonderland. Haven't you wondered where it is? Alice in Wonderland. How do you get to Wonderland? It all began on a dreamy summer afternoon. I was sitting under a tree with my kitty Dinah, and we were listening to my sister read her history lesson from a book that didn't have a single picture in it. As she read, I sighed and thought that somewhere, somehow there must be a place more interesting than this, a place where cats could talk and books could not. Nonsense, said my sister, nonsense. That's it. If I had a world of my own, everything would be nonsense. Nothing would be what it isn't, and contrarywise, what it is, it wouldn't be, and what it wouldn't be, it would. Why, in my world... Cats and rabbits would reside in fancy little houses. My little world would be a wonderland. I was just dozing off when suddenly a white rabbit hopped by. He was all dressed up in a waistcoat and a watch, and he was in a terrible hurry. When I reached out to stop him, he avoided me, and looking quickly at the time, he said, I'm late, I'm late, for a very important date. I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, can't wait. I'm late for a very important date. I'm late, I'm late. I followed him down his rabbit hole, and suddenly found myself falling down, down, down. At the bottom, I nearly caught the rabbit as he ran along a crooked corridor. Then he disappeared through a tiny door. And that's where all my ups and downs began. I drank from a magic bottle, which made me small enough for the door, but not tall enough to reach the key I'd left up on the table. I ate a magic cookie, which made me so big I filled the room entirely. I cried with vexation until an ocean of my own tears floated the magic bottle up to me. One drink, and I shrank again so much I fell down the neck of the bottle. Together we floated away through a keyhole into the strangest world you ever saw. It was full of puzzling characters playing a crazy game called the caucus race. It was the funniest race I ever saw because it went backwards as well as forward. Nobody ever won. There were some lobsters and there was a dodo riding a toucan and a pelican pushing a parrot. The white rabbit sailed by in an umbrella filled with water and then scurried ashore still looking at his watch. I was hunting through the woods for him when I heard Tweedledum and Tweedledee beeping at me like automobiles from behind a tree. They were indeed a peculiar pair. They lisped and wore high collars with their names printed on them. And when I tried to leave, they accused me of being impolite. So I asked about the rabbit, but instead they told me about the walrus and the carpenter. Do you know where I saw the rabbit again? Right at his darling little house. I was going in the front door just as he was rushing out the back. He got away again. I ate a cookie which said, eat me, and grew so big inside the house, I nearly raised the roof. I reached out through a window down to the garden and found a piece of carrot which cured me of being such a giant. In a moment, I was no taller than the grass on the lawn and on easy speaking terms with the flowers. I met a caterpillar who blew alphabetical smoke from his pipe and talked incessantly in riddles. He brought me back to my proper height with a magic piece of mushroom. And I was getting lost in the woods all over again. When who do you suppose popped up from nowhere? Why, the famous Cheshire Cat, grin and all. When I asked him if he had seen the rabbit, he kept disappearing and dodging the issue. Sometimes all I could see was his teeth shining in the dark forest, which was absolutely no help at all. Mainly the Cheshire Cat could only sing. Twas brilliant. The cat was still singing in the distance when I found the Mad Hatter's tea party raging under the trees. The Hatter's hat and the Hare's ears could easily be seen sticking up over a great cloud of steam at the end of a very long table, and all the teapots were keeping time to a happy tune. As I peeked cautiously out from behind a chair, I could see the Hatter and the Hare were very busy drinking hot tea and singing the unbirthday song. A very merry unbirthday to all. Suddenly, there was the white rabbit, hopping right into the middle of things. 
No one was madder than he was when the Hatter and the Hare discovered his watch was two days slow. So that's why he was so late. They ended the watch trouble then and there with several blows from a mallet and tossed the poor rabbit over a wall. It was no use. He had simply disappeared again. Wonderland was getting to be a tiresome bother. It would be such a relief to see Dinah and have a nice cup of tea again. The forest paths around me were as mixed up as I was, and the forest trees were filled with all sorts of nonsense, like umbrella birds taking showers, pencil birds riding, and hammer birds hammering until I thought my head would split. Oh, if only something somewhere made sense somehow. If I'd listened to my sister, I wouldn't be here at all. But that's just the trouble with me. I certainly should have known better than to visit the Queen of Hearts. She was so cruel, she would cut off a card's head just for planting white roses instead of red. The first time I saw her, she was marching with the card soldiers. Guess who was blowing the trumpet to clear the way? The white rabbit, who paid no attention to me at all. The Queen was very quarrelsome. When I told her I was just trying to find my way home, she said, your way. Everything here is my way, remember that. She seemed to like me, though, because she invited me to a game of croquet. I was having sense enough to let her win, when all of a sudden, there was the Cheshire Cat again, an O with a grin on him as wide as a barn door, and a plan to make real mischief. I soon found out what. Without showing himself to anyone but me, he caught the queen as she was swinging her flamingo club and flipped her highness right over on her crowned head. The earth shook when she landed. And so did I, because when she got up, she blamed the whole thing on me. Off with her head, she shouted, pointing in my direction. Even the poor king, who hadn't seen the Cheshire cat either, was horrified. He bravely suggested that I be given a trial, even if it was unfair. The queen agreed in a terrible voice that scattered cards right and left, and took the bench herself to see that injustice was quickly done. I was accused of enticing the queen into a game of croquet. Imagine! And causing her to lose her temper. It was an awful trial. I'll never forget it. The queen kept shouting, the jury paid no attention, and the silly cards kept losing their heads. To make matters even worse, the March Hare and the Dormouse and the Mad Hatter all turned up to testify without anything worthwhile to say. Even the White Rabbit was no help, for alas, he belonged to the Queen of Hearts. I should never have escaped had it not been for a very deep cup of tea. I tumbled into it quite by accident, and when I came up for air, there I was, at the very door of Wonderland, with the mean queen and her army right behind me. Not far away, I could see myself, still sound asleep with Dinah in my lap. Just then came my sister's voice calling, Alice, wake up! Alice, wake up! Alice, wake up!